All right, we're going to do this the harder way. Pull cord start. We're going to service this 3500 watt Predator inverter generator. I bought this generator going on, let's see, three years ago. It'll be this, I think this October will be three years. And this little generator has roughly about uh, 300 hours. This generator, if you don't have your manual or you lost it like I have, one good thing is you can go to the Harbor Freight website and look up the manual. They, that's one thing they do for almost every tool that they have. Download the most uh, up-to-date manual. And uh, I have it all right here on this tablet. Things you're going to need is a spark plug socket, 10 millimeter socket for the oil plug, uh, an extension, a ratchet, and a Phillips screwdriver, possibly some penetrating oil, possibly some carburetor cleaner, uh, a funnel that's longer. Uh, I'm using Mobile One uh, Synthetic 10W30. I've got an NJK new spark plug, and I've got some Lucas fuel treatment. And because my battery finally give out on me, uh, I have a new uh, a new battery. And one thing you probably wouldn't think of is Armor All. One of the reasons I say the Armor All, if you look at this generator, it looks pretty well new. This generator is three years old. We keep it inside, out of the weather, other than when we're using it. And I clean it up and Armor All it pretty regularly. We have one panel in the front to service, and this is the battery panel. It has one Phillips screw. Uh, release that, and it falls out the front. This is the panel that we're going to remove right now. This is the main access to uh, get into the generator and service it. There's two screws at the top that we'll take out. I've already took the liberty of loosening them to save time. And then you'll pull this little tab up here and there's a handle. You just pop out. And this thing has little, little grommets here and here and little male protrusions that uh, I think there's three of them. And that's what holds it on other than the screws and the little clips at the bottom. Let's show you around on the inside of the engine compartment. All right, this is a spark plug. Uh, it's a countersunk spark plug. Some people call it Hemi. Uh, we're only replacing this because we want to. There's nothing wrong with it. It still runs great. Down at the bottom here, there is the, uh, this right here is the drain plug for the oil. And this orange plug is the field plug for the, for the oil. And then we're going to come over here. This is the carburetor right here. There's some uh, ports right here on these tubes to drain these out during the winter when you're not using it. This compartment right here is your air filter. Before you start uh, servicing this generator, make sure this, that your switch is in the off position. This is not only an electrical switch that turns it on and off, it also turns the fuel on and off. So when this is off, the fuel can't drain out. I'm gonna use a set of soft jaw pliers to pull the spark plug uh, lead off. We'll get in here, and there we go. We popped it right off, and now you can see the spark plug down in there. Let me get that out of the way. Ta da, spark plug. This is a 13 millimeter socket and an extension. Uh, now, how we're going to do this is we're going to slide that socket down in this little hole. Let me give you, let me step back here so you can see that a little bit. All right, you got to feel it pop in. The rubber boot will grab a hold of the spark plug so when you loosen it up and take it out then you can the spark plug will come right out with it otherwise you're going to, have to fish it out it wasn't terribly tight it doesn't have to be terribly tight so go ahead and pull this dude out so I can come off of these little these little soft uh, jaw pliers are handy okay i pulled it right out anyway there's a spark plug This is a good plug. This is a Bosch plug that come out of it. Um, that's probably why we've not had any problem with it. This thing has got almost 300 hours on it and the plug looks almost perfectly new. This is why the manual is so important. I went ahead and downloaded this. This is spark plug, the tight spark plug. Uh, and then here's the uh, gap of the spark plug, 27 thousandths of an inch to 31 thousandths of an inch. On my feeler gauge, you know, there's different types of feeler gauges too. You have the little one for spark plugs. This is just a, you know, a multi-purpose feeler gauge. So I've got a seven and a, and a 23 and it slipped right in perfectly. And I think that is about as good as we're going to get. All right, we got the gap set here. And now we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on this spark plug. 
this is an aluminum head. Anytime you put a spark plug into an aluminum head, uh, make sure you put some anisees on it. I think I put a little bit too much, but it'll be all right. I'll wipe it off. Run it around your threads right like this, and then put the spark plug in the hole. And what this does is it keeps the, it just as it, the name suggests, it keeps the plug from seizing to the aluminum head. And that's very important because otherwise the next time you change your spark plug, when you unscrew it, you're going to take the threads out of the head. Old, the old timey engines with cast iron, that was not really that important. Uh, but now with these aluminum heads, I don't care if it's a car or what, make sure you put anisees on your spark plugs. All right, we'll put the spark plug in. We'll put it right back in there. Anisees is on, we're ready to go. Got it all the way down and once I get a spark plug you can torque it if you want to but on a aluminum head just remember it's aluminum I probably do uh, once it touches I want to crush the crush washer a little bit I'm gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease on the spark plug boot and it'll make it slide in easier and uh, some people call it bub grease dielectric grease is the official name for it and uh, we'll, it'll it'll cause the keep the water out and it'll also cause the uh, boot to slide in easier Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure that gets in there good. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the oil. Uh, there's a little plug in the bottom of this, a little rubber plug, and uh, the oil drains out and actually goes in this little catch, comes out the bottom plug. And it's kind of more in the middle of the of the generator so you really need to have it out over something so what i did is i put this little uh roller wheel here and got it the same height all right this is the bottom side of the generator what i'm going to just take my hand in top and push down and it pops that little plug right out all right here's the plug where i or where the plug just come out of here if you look directly above my finger there's a the little drain plug and the uh the oil director i guess you'd call it Cause it to uh, come straight down. All right, I'm gonna use this old coffee container. There's less than a quart of oil in this uh, generator. I'm just gonna set it down under this hole. All right, now we're gonna pop this loose, uh, the oil drain plug. In a perfect world, we would uh, have this engine really, really hot, but uh, it's been run a little bit today. So the oil stirred up. Let's go ahead and take this plug completely out. Hope we hit the oil pan. Oh, hit it. All right, what's going to make this oil drain a little bit faster, too, is go ahead and take your uh, fill plug up. It's also your dipstick. Get that out of the way. Now let the air rush in. All right, we've got the manual here, and it says here that it's 10W30 oil. So we've got the correct oil, and it shows it's 20 fluid ounces. And that's, that's fine, but what I'm going to do is put it on a flat surface and make sure it's to its fullest point. This is a service schedule uh, in the manual, and it shows here that the oil needs to be uh, changed every 100 hours. Just to put the oil change in perspective, the manual says every 100 hours change the oil. We're using synthetic oil, and I, I'm still going to change it every 100 hours. However, if you're out like boondocking, so that's basically every four days you're going to change your oil uh, if you're running it 24 hours a day. We only use this particular generator during the winter uh, this year for like power outages and such and so right now we only have about 50 hours on this oil i don't care every spring i'm going to change my oil getting ready for camping and whatever happens just do maintenance all right we're going to put the drain plug back in it we've lost uh about all the oil we're going to lose out of it right now this is this aluminum block here too so i'm going to save probably 15 20 pounds of torque at the most all right we're going to wipe this out a little bit of oil drip here and there you want to keep this as clean as you can in here and uh definitely oil free because the oil collects dirt and dust all right now we got that cleaned out i'm going to put this little plug back into the bottom it's like a little grommet it pops right back in no big deal all right looks pretty good take a look
three, four, five. So we got to get down to 12 ounces left. So we're going to take our funnel here and try not to make a mess. I'm using Mobile One uh, Full Synthetic Oil. I've used it quite a bit in a lot of things and had really good results. Oil really holds up. All right, it says about 20 ounces of oil. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty close to that right now, but I also was sitting here reading the uh, owner's manual, and it says check the oil level. The oil level should be up to the edge of the hole as shown. So that means this is level, and if you look right here, the oil is right to the very, very edge. Matter of fact, I had a little bit drop over, so it's not quite 20 ounces of oil. Hope you can see that the oil is right up to the very edge. It couldn't get any more full. This thing is on a perfectly level surface too, so this is about perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and put the uh, dipstick back in. All right, this is the air filter. We're going to go ahead and service this. It's got a little flip on the bottom. As I recall, the last time I did this, this is probably the hardest thing about it all. It's just a little foam piece here, and it looks in really good shape little oil there in the bottom you can see that we'll get that cleaned up this has got so little dirt in I, we don't use it in a dirty environment it's only been in the campground and uh sitting outside our house running when the power is out so this is almost completely clean right now little oil at the bottom you see that i just squished it out onto the rag let's just blow by All right, this got one little corner here that's uh, cut off. That goes to the back. And you put this little strap back down. There you go. This filter is just a foam filter, so if it's really dirty, you can take it and uh, uh, get you a, a nice warm bowl of water, put Dawn dish detergent in it, and really wash it out good. Take your water hose, squeeze it out, let it dry, and that's really all you need to do to service that. This is the uh, spark arrestor on the exhaust, and all it is is a little mesh deal here that keeps uh, any kind of embers or anything coming out of the exhaust from coming out and catching a fire. If you guys are going to go camping in, say, a national park or many state parks, they come around to check to see if you have this spark arrestor on your uh, generator. And if you don't, they'll make you turn it off. What we're going to do is use uh, some carburetor cr uh, cleaner. This is by Gum Out. And basically what we're going to do is just spray this in there and take any carbon buildup. I'm not going to go crazy with this stuff. Just a, You'll see the black stuff come out of it. You're just washing this dude out. And that's all there is to that. I just want to blow that out. I'm going to look everything over, make sure everything's there. My little plugs, my little rubber booties, they're not broke because this is how it keeps the weather out. You want to make sure these are intact. You want to make sure everything is tight, nothing is, nothing is loose. You can get parts for this generator at Harbor Freight. Uh, so if any of these little things are missing or break, you know, go ahead and uh, order, order the right one. These are like the little circuit breaker covers. If you don't want water getting in these. Make sure your switch is in the off position here, and then you're going to pull your cord out. Go ahead and inspect your cord. Make sure there's no frays or anything. You don't want to have this go out on you at the campground or when you need it the most if the battery is down. So we don't use this very much, uh, and because it's electric start, but make sure you check this during your service. All right, I got this battery from AutoZone. The first battery that come with it lasted, I guess, for a year and a half. Uh, and the second one I got lasted hardly at any time at all. Uh, and I keep these batteries on trickle charge. I'll take them out in the winter uh, and set them off to the side. And uh, this battery right here is the GSX-7L. Uh, it's Duralast. I got it at AutoZone, Duralast Gold Batteries. Uh, they're not the cheapest batteries, but uh, they seem to be a really good battery. So we're going to go ahead and install this battery. I'm going to put my little nuts in the bottom of the uh, battery terminal. You always put the positive on first. Uh, you never never put the never put the negative on first. If you put the negative on first and then put the positive on, and you touch something with a screwdriver, you can arc it out. It's a good rule of thumb whether tank, tractor, automobile, boat, or generators. 
always put the negative on last that way you can't arc out so we'll that's good and tight take the negative I charged this battery up on a trickle charger right after I got it uh, yesterday day before yesterday so it should be it shows to be good So we'll pull that little strap up, get it out of the way. Oops, hang on. Let me pull that back out again. Make sure that goes between them battery posts so that it that doesn't get hung up. There we go. And that's that's how you do it. Go ahead and put this little cover on. It's got two little plates at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and look on the inside one more time. We're going to check everything. Touch your spark plug. Look at your your uh, uh, carburetor, your air filter. Make sure nothing's leaking. If you see that last little bit of oil, go ahead and wipe it off now. And then we're going to go ahead and put this cover on. Now this cover's got three little tabs at the bottom. It's really, really simple. Just put it on and then fold it up. Now you remember this little rubber piece here folds up out of the way. And there is a uh, female grommet there. Push there there and here and that grommets in the is are locked in and there's a little grommet right here and you push down take your screws screw them in the place and now we have just service the uh, predator 3500 watt inverter generator all right this is the uh, strainer that goes down inside the fuel tank and this little red uh, tab here is where you fill the fuel up to you're not supposed to fill it up anymore i filled it up higher before and never really had any issue but just for for staying within the rules we'll go ahead and fill it up to here all right we're going to do this the harder way Pull we'll cord start, see what it does. All right, first pull. All right, this is uh, this is on economy mode. This run like most of your lights and stuff on your camper and you know, your, your basic stuff. Uh, as the load increases, the, it revs up. Sometimes you wanna have a little reserve so you can turn the economy off. And it raises it up just a little bit. So when you put it under a really heavy load, then you can hear uh, the uh, generator picking up. In the world of uh, generators, we're going to do what they would call a load bank, and a load bank is just putting a load on it. This or this little heater will turn out uh, 1,500 watts. That's what it, it pulls at its maximum capacity. So we're going to turn it to max, turn it all the way to high, plug it in. And the sound hardly even changed. Dirty. But there's heat coming out of it. It's fully hot. So that's about half the low capacity of this generator. And you can hardly tell a difference in the sound at all. I'm sitting here talking normally to you. Uh, right beside this with a microphone right here. I'm going to walk around it so you can. It's a little bit louder at the back. Very little bit. So we'll just go all the way around it. And you can kind of hear what I'm hearing. The heater is blowing very hot. And that's basically a load bank to test it to show that it's, you know, putting out good power. All right, I'm going to get to the very last question and say goodbye to everybody. 
I have so many people ask me this question, probably the number one question of all of my videos, would you buy this generator again? And I will have to say, absolutely. Hey, I'd like to take this time to thank you for watching our videos. Uh, if you would, please hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the little bell. It really helps us out. God bless and have a great day.